Matisse, The King of Color by Lawrence Anholt. Monique climbed the steep hill and up some long steps to a huge building high above the town. The sign by the door said, Henri Matisse. It was like stepping into a multicolored jungle. Birds flew from room to room and plants grew as tall as trees. Hello, called a small voice. Is that the night nurse? Hello, Mr. Matisse, said Monique. I have come to look after you. The old artist had a silver beard and twinkly glasses. He was recovering from a big operation. The doctors thought he would never paint again. I feel a little better, he said, but I would like you to read to me. So Monique chose a book. She read for a long time. Matisse didn't sleep, but Monique did. Oh, I'm sorry, she said. This is my very first job. Matisse just smiled. Look, I made a drawing of you. Then Matisse told her about his adventures in different lands diving in tropical lagoons, and rowing on blue-green seas. And soon, Monique forgot it was dark outside. Matisse loved music. Matisse loved flowers. Matisse loved children, too. He tied chalk to a long stick so that he could draw his grandchildren on the ceiling. They keep me company when I can't sleep, he said. He was always trying to find ways to make his paintings brighter and brighter. Because the thing Matisse loved most of all was color. Some people called him the wild beast because his colors were so crazy. Every evening, Monique climbed the hill to the jungle studio. Monique helped Matisse to sit up and paint, and they became good friends. Matisse made lots of pictures of Monique in a beautiful silk dress, with a mandolin on a chair, and all of his work was full of joy. There's enough sadness in the world, he would say. Look how much better I am, said Matisse one day. It's like having a new life. Thank you for looking after me, Monique. You have been like a grandfather to me, said Monique. Then Monique picked up her bag and walked slowly out of the jungle room. She thought she would never see Matisse again. Monique went to school far away in the mountains. But it was not an ordinary school. Everybody dressed in black and white. There were no colors at all. Monique's school was a school for nuns. Life was very hard and the nuns were so poor, they didn't even have a proper chapel. They had to say their prayers in a cold and leaky garage. When the old nuns heard that Monique had been a nurse, they gave her a bicycle and sent her to look after people who weren't well. Every day, Monique cycled along the lane past a big empty house. The house had views right across the mountains to the sea. It was called the dream. One afternoon in June, 
Monique saw that a new owner was moving into the dream. The new owner loved birds. The new owner loved cats. The new owner was Henri Matisse. Matisse was delighted to see Monique again. You are all black and white, he teased. But I have found a way to be more colorful than ever. Look, I'll show you. First, I put on some music. Jazz is best. Now I shall paint some big sheets of paper, as bright as I can. Then, with hands as quick as butterflies, Matisse cut a hundred dancing shapes, and soon they were pinned up on every wall of the dream. I have been painting too, said Monique shyly. She showed Matisse a tiny picture. It was a design for a stained glass window. We could have this made with real stained glass, as high as this room, said Matisse. But Monique laughed. The nuns don't even have a chapel. You can't put stained glass windows in a garage. It was nearly dark when Monique ran home. The nuns would be worried. And look, Monique was covered in splashes of color. Come back soon, laughed Matisse. Late into the night, the lights burned at the dream. Matisse was working on an idea. The next time Monique called, she found Matisse very excited. Monique, you have been so kind to me. This is my idea. I am going to build a chapel up here in the mountains, not a dark, gloomy church. My chapel will be a house of color. It will be my present for you. Matisse asked Monique to build a model like a big doll's house. Now all I have to do is fill your box with my imagination. Matisse made wonderful drawings for the chapel walls. He even designed some colorful robes for the priests to wear. Mm, we do not want a chapel built by a wild beast, grumbled the old nuns. The chapel took a very long time. Matisse became tired. He asked the carpenter to put wheels on a bed and a tray for his paints. Matisse called it his taxi bed. At last, the workmen began to put up the chapel walls. Their bangs and shouts echoed through the mountains. The chapel had a bright blue roof and a golden bell on a curly tower. Mm, this will be more like a circus than a chapel, said the old man. One gray day when everything was nearly finished, Monique pushed Matisse along the lane to look inside. Monique was surprised. Everything seemed to be shiny white. It didn't look like a house of color at all. Perhaps the nuns had won. The chapel was black and white, just like their clothes. But the king of color had one more trick to play. He had been working away in his studio, designing windows for the chapel, using colored paper to cut out blue and green shapes of colored light. Seventeen stained glass windows were made in a factory, exactly as Matisse had planned. A big truck climbed slowly up the mountain and the workmen lifted them carefully into place. Then they drove back down the mountain and the chapel was finished. Monique got up early. It was her turn to wake the others. And today was a very special day. It was the opening of the Matisse Chapel. There would be lots of visitors. 
and Monique wanted everything to be ready. She crept outside. The chapel was dark and quiet. Then something amazing happened. The morning sun rose over the mountains and a bright ray of sunlight fell across the darkened windows. Very slowly, the room began to fill with colored light. It crept across the floor and onto the white walls. Then, just like a magic painting, the black and white world filled with beautiful colors. Monique felt as if she was floating in a multicolored sea. Matisse was painting with light. Monique stood still for a moment, then she went to wake the others. High on the blue roof, the golden bell began to chime. It echoed across the mountains to the sea. As the sunlight filled his room, Matisse heard the sound and he smiled. Now I can rest, said the king of color.